let's take a look at how to flex the original budget to make it more comparable with the actual numbers. So if the original budget that was prepared at the start of the year is for a different amount of units that were actually produced during that year, we have to flex that original budget. So we basically ask ourselves how much should it have cost us if we had known what the actual units produced would have been. So we just restate the original budget for the actual units produced. So let's look at our example. So we've got the original budget for a thousand units and we know now we have produced 1,100 units. So we must just restate the original budget but for 1,100 units. So every cost item, or every line item, we will ask ourselves how much should it have been if we had known from the start that we're going to produce 1,100 units. So this actual units produced is very important. If you forget to use actual units produced in your flexible budget, you're going to get all your variances wrong and you're going to lose all your marks. So please remember, always flex the budget using the actual units produced. So let's look at the material, the first one. So to make 1,000 units, we budgeted for 10,000. So we can calculate the cost per unit. That is how much we should have spent per unit. So 10,000 divided by 1,000, that will give us 10 per unit. And then we multiply the 10 per unit by the actual units produced of 1,100, and that will give us 11,000. So we simply gross up the amount for the change in units. So our, if you look carefully, our units, we budgeted for 1,000 and we produced 1,100. So that's 10% more. So because material is a variable cost, we would expect material cost to be 10% more. And that's what happened. We originally budgeted for 10,000 and now we say we should have spent 11,000 because we made 10% more units. So let's look at another example. So let's take variable overheads. So we said we budget for 30,000 for 1,000 units. So if we produce 1,100 units, how much should we have spent on variable manufacturing overheads? Remember, it's variable, so it changes in direct proportion. So again, we can divide the 30,000 by the original 1,000 units we budgeted for, and that'll give us 30 per unit. And then we can multiply it by the actual units produced to get to 33,000. So this 30 per unit is our standard cost per unit. And the same for material. This 10 per unit is our standard cost per unit for material. Um, and then let's look at the fixed manufacturing overhead. So fixed cost is a bit different here. So we budgeted for 40,000 for... Uh, to make 1,000 units. So think of an example of fixed manufacturing overheads. So let's think of a, a, an actual expense. So let's say factory rental. So our rent, we budget for 40,000, and that is to make 1,000 units. So what happens if we make 1,100 units? How much should we pay for rent? Should the rent go up just because we made 10% more units? Remember, it's a fixed cost. We pay the landlord independent of what we produce. So provided that we don't need a new facility so that we can fit in the extra units, then we still only should pay 40000 So fixed costs should not change. That stays the same. It's only our variable costs that needs to be adjusted um, to get to the flexed budget. So now we can look at the flexed budget, this column here. We can see the total now is 106,000. It makes sense that it's more because we produced more units. So we expect to pay more. So we should be allowed to spend more. It's not a, um, in direct proportion, all of it, because there was some fixed costs in there that stayed the same. And now we can compare this um, should cost or the flexible budget to the actual um, results. So to clean up this a bit, I will turn over to the next page where we take away the original budget. Why can I scratch out the original budget? Well, the original budget is irrelevant. We're never going to compare the original budget's line items to the actuals because that was for a different amount of units. 
So if you look on the next page, this is the same information I had previously, the flexed budget and the actual. I just removed the original budget. And now we can compare the two. Now we can say, okay, for material, we budgeted or we should have spent 11,000. And that was to make 1,100 units, the actual units produced. But we actually spent 11,495. Now the question is, why? Why did we overspend? So we spent more, and what could have gone wrong? So think of any company that manufactures a product, and for material we spent more than what we should have spent. Why could that have been? So you might be thinking, okay, maybe we paid too much for the raw materials. So that's a price variance. So you might run to the, the purchasing department and ask them, why did you pay more than what you should have paid? And they might say, well, here's the invoice. I paid exactly what I should have paid according to the standard cost card. It wasn't me. What else could have gone wrong? So they might have purchased the material at the right price, but then we used too much of it. So some of it was broken, some of it fell or got stolen um, or went missing along the way, or we just used more than what we should have used. So there might have been a usage variance as well. So you can see, here the, we can see we overspent on material. We spent 495 too much, but we don't know yet. Was it due to a price variance or was it due to a quantity variance? And we need to find a way in order to split this variance of 495 into the quantity and the price variance because we want to know how much was as a result of using too much material and how much was as a result of paying too much per kilogram, for instance. And that's the same for the other cost. So let's look at labor. Labor, we should have spent 22,000, but we actually spent 22, so there's no problem there. But it could have been, or it could have um, happened that we worked more hours, but then paid less per hour and it cancelled out. And that's something we would want to know in order to address it if we didn't um, uh, produce according to the standards. But we can't um, do that before we split the hours, how much should have been worked, versus the rate per hour. And then the same for the rest. So that's what we'll have to look at next. How do we split the variance between actual and flexed budget into the quantity and the price differences?